my dear friends welcome back to another tutorial and uh, to celebrate uh, nearly 500 of you on the channel and if, if you haven't already please subscribe thanks a lot we're gonna make the wind sock and an animate wind sock uh, that is gonna move into the wind that is gonna have different wind strengths you know it's very tricky to make it uh, uh, realistic so let's uh, let's get started and uh, go back to the drawing board shut off the sim and let's hope that we all arrive to this result <laughs> okay so first thing first we need to design our um, 3d model here uh, you can see a comparison from the windsock you have uh, seen uh, in uh, my previous uh, video and the default windsock imported from the windsock sample uh, that you can uh, download uh, from the MFSS SDK as you can see the difference is massive they model an enormous enormous windsock we, we know that uh, it's enormous it's uh, 5.4 meters long by 8 meters high it's it's enormous, it's enormous. So uh, let's Google some windsock information. And here you can see uh, some uh, some model of windsock. And the, the biggest one has a diameter of 90 centimeter and is longer uh, 3 meter and 65. So it, the, the default windsock is like 50% bigger than this thing. A little model, so it's useful for uh, little to medium uh, airports. So the length of the sock will be two meters and a half, and the diameter will be 45 centimeters. So we are in Blender, we have opened a new project, and let's add uh, the pole. So add a cylinder. We don't need a lot of definition for the cylinder, so 20 vertices, the diameter of this, uh, the radius of the cylinder, uh, maybe 0 0.05, and its height is 5 meters, GZ, and Ctrl A, apply all transform to set its origin point at the origin of the world. Now, uh, let's add the sock itself that is a cylinder. So add a mesh cylinder and 20 vertices. It's okay also for the socks. Well, maybe 34. And the radius of the sock will be 0 0.25 because the diameter is going to be 50 centimeter and its length is going to be 2.5 meter. So let's put this right here. So rotate this on the x axis by 90 degrees, R, R, X, 90. And let's move this G, Y, and Z, Z, like here, should be good, yes. Maybe here, yeah, of course. And uh, Reset all transforms so the origin point of the socks will be at the origin of the world. Okay, uh, let's add some loops. So I select the loop cut and uh, add some loops here. And especially in the, the first part of the sock, so like this, add some more because here is the part that is going to bend more when there is little wind. And we are okay, so let's give it a shape, a, a cone shape. I'm going to use the proportional editing. I'm going to select the X-ray mode, so I select all the vertices in this area. And I'm going to scale with the S key. And with a scroll wheel mouse, I'm gonna apply this too much. Yeah, like this. So we have the basic uh, shape of the wind sock. Let's apply to this uh, material. And uh, I grabbed the, the material directly from the MFS SDK. Uh, let's add MFS standard material. Well, standard material. We all know. 
how this works. Add the base color and will be this one. And then I click on site materials and the normal materials here. Because let's go back into modeling. We can now go in face mode and the list the two faces uh, from the end and the start of the windsock. So select them and press delete faces. Let's shade the smooth. So right click and shade this smooth. Okay, so let's add a modifier to make it uh, more thick to give it some uh, three dimensional. So this will be a solidify modifier and the thickness of uh, one centimeter is okay. And now we should go to the UV editing and scale this on the y direction so it will be like this uh, let's give also the pole um, material so material the new material maybe gray will be metallic and uh, with this roughness and let's give this name the pole and this will be the wind sock uh, fabric. Uh, we need uh, um, a way to attach to attack the wind sock to the pole. And uh, let's add uh, a cylinder here. Let's add an attachment here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna select the edge and shift S. Cursor to select it to push the the 3D cursor here and go back in object mode and add here a cylinder a cylinder and the cylinder we have 24 it's okay radius is the same depth is 0.01 it's okay i rotate this uh, uh, by 90 degrees yeah pick the two faces of the cylinder and press i to insect them Yeah, and precise to insect them. Maybe we can um, hide this with the H key and go back to solid mode. Okay, so delete those two faces. And now I'm gonna select uh, this border and Alt and select and Shift and Alt and select also the other border. Yeah, and uh, then I can um, right click and bridge edge loops. So we have uh, all the phases created between the two edge loops and now I can make this uh, a little bit more, more round by adding a loop cut uh, in the middle in the middle here maybe I should scale this oh let's go to edit mode scale this a little bit yeah make it a little bit more wide I'm gonna scale this uh, proportional yeah. yeah this and also on you know, the inside another loop cut on the inside and scale it and shade this smooth so we can give this uh, the metallic material and bring back the sock so I think that it's a little bit too fat so in edit mode select all and using the shrink fatten you can shrink it a bit Okay, I think it is nice. Let's shade smooth this also. Uh, let's make uh, um, a thing that uh, rotates around uh, the pole. Yeah, I'm gonna make shift S to go closer toward the origin and add another cylinder. Mesh, a cylinder, oh, will be 20, and the height uh, will be 0 0.7. Yeah, it's okay. Ah, let's scale it a little bit. So scale shift Z. And now uh, let's give this also the metallic material and shade it smooth. And it to extrude. And now the sock is connected a bit. A bit larger, those <laughs> are a bit large, those things. So we can maybe do this individual origin and scale. 
join this because it's a unique object. Name is wind sock uh, attach. So bringing um, up the end panel, let's make sure that wind sock rotation is zero, location is zero, and scale is one. The pole, everything is okay. And also this stuff, control A, apply or transform. So location is zero, rotation is zero, and scale is one. So now we should add a special object to make the windsock movement. And this special object is called an armature. An armature is like um, the skeleton, uh, which is a spine, it has bones inside a human body. And uh, inside an object, let us to control with the movement of the bones, the position of the vertices of the mesh. So let's add an armature and to add this, press add, armature, single bone. And here is our bone. So first thing first, let's make this uh, um, see, see true. So go to uh, the armature, this, this little man here, viewport displays, and click in front so the bone is uh, um, is show and uh, the bone has a head which is this part here the bigger part and a tail so let's bring this bone up to the location of the windsock and press gz and right there and rotate on the x-axis minus 90 degree now make sure to press Ctrl A and apply all transform. So the origin of the armature is the origin of the work. Double check this, please, because this is very important. Now let's go to edit mode. And in edit mode, we can edit the bone like every other object in Blender. So if we pick the bone in the middle, but with G, we can move the bone. If we pick the tail, of the bone, we can move the tail, and if we pick the head, we can move the head of the bone. Also, we can uh, extrude the bone. So what I'm gonna do here is going to wireframe and put this in the part where the windsock doesn't move because this part is uh, is rigid, is normally rigid in a windsock. And I say now, with the tail of the bone selected, I'm gonna extrude on the y-axis to create a new bone. And now a new bone is created. I'm gonna extrude it again, so EY, 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 now we want to name the bone according to our specification, to, to my specification, to what we're gonna call them. And I'm gonna call them uh, like this, wind sock spine zero, spine one. And by the way, this is the, the same uh, naming that uh, the, the, the default the, the default sample is using, wind sock spine Naming bone is really important when we deal with armature, so we can uh, know where a particular bone is by its name. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we can also go in edit mode to show their name. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So now that we have named the bone, we should parent the armature to the windsock fabric. And the armature will be the parent and the windsock fabric will be the child. So let's select first the child and by clicking shift, I select the parent. And the parent is yellow and the child is orange. So I'm gonna control P to set the parent. I'm gonna choose automatic wakes. And now the armature is the parent of the windsock. So if we move the armature, the windsock will follow. So let's add an empty. And an empty 
is an, um, a special object without uh, uh, without geometry. Uh, let's call this empty orientation. And now we should parent the armature to this empty. So the empty would be the parent of the armature and the parent is yellow. Control P and parent to object. Uh, skip transform, okay, yeah. And this one to the empty also. Control P, parent to object, keep transform. So when we move the empty, the other object will follow. And the, the reason of this is the orientation into the wind of the wind. So this, uh, this empty will control your orientation into the wind, while the armature will control uh, the, the movement of the sock itself. So uh, the armature has a special mode here called the pose mode. And in pose mode, as you can see, the bones become blue. If you rotate uh, the bone, the mesh will follow along. And uh, uh, the bone, uh, this, this type of moving, is called forward kinematics because if we move the first bone, all the other bone will move. If we move the second bone, we'll move all the other bone except the first, and so on. So each uh, bone will make the other bone move uh, with, uh, with it uh, in a forward way. So when moving a bone, the mesh attached oriented to that bone will move according to the automatic wakes we have set when we have done parenting the armature to the sock. To see uh, those weights, we can go to object mode and uh, click on the armature, shift click on the sock and go to weight paint. So now I can control click each bone and I can visually see by the color how each vertex is affected. The more red, the more is affected. Uh, the more blue, the less is affected. So the movement of, uh, let's say, this bone will affect only this region here, which is red, and a little bit where it's blue. If we can control click here, the movement of this is affecting the yellow region, but also is affecting here, this region, because it is light blue. And uh, if, if you can see, it, it's not uh, so much natural, and we can fix this by removing the weight. So in the slider here, let's move the weight to zero, like this. Make sure you have front faces deselected, so we can uh, paint all the way through to the other side and the fall off to project it. So now I, I'm removing here. As you can see, I'm removing the influence of this bone. So when I rotate this, this is not moving anymore. So I think this is nice. And you can do this for all the bone if you are not sat really satisfied with the movement. Okay, so now we need to do our animation. Now let's go to object mode, select the armature, Go to pose mode, and the, the armature, as uh, as you can see here in its menu, has a pose position and a rest position. The position is the default pose of the armature and is the same of the edit mode. When we go to edit mode, you are always in the uh, rest uh, uh, position. Now let's make a pose. So let's do this. This is how the windsock will look when there is uh, no wind. So let's open the animation tab here. Now we are in the, go to the Adobe sheet 
and in the action element. Now I want to select all the bone by pressing the A key. And now I'm going to insert a location and a rotation keyframe. And let's call this nuts 0, 0. Let's put this, uh, so maybe the animation will be 100 frames long. And let's copy this keyframe, the same keyframe, the same position to the end of our animation because we want to make a loop. We want to make a loop. So Shift D and duplicate this. So if we play this animation, it would be boring because we don't have intermediate keyframes. So we need to add keyframes in the middle of this animation. This is the um, animation that will play when there is no wind. We can do very little movement. And we can maybe go there to the middle of the animation and rotate every bone by pressing R just a little bit. And I can now select all the bones, press I on the keyboard and location and rotation. So we can, if we play the animation now, we can see some little movement. So let's spice this up. Maybe on frame 30 here. Let's move the bone. Small movements. I insert a location keyframe. And now go to frame maybe 70 and rotate. You don't need to be precise. We are trying to, to mimic the movement of the wind. So I insert location and rotation. And maybe we can do another one, maybe here. I and insert location and rotation. And now if we play the animation, You can see the movement when there is little wind. So maybe here is too much. And inside location and rotation. And we can shift D and copy the keyframe along the timeline. Like this. I'm going to select this and duplicate them along the timeline. Okay, and I would say this could be um, a nice animation for the uh, win zero. So we have when we have done with the, our work, we can push down the animation to the NLA editor. So go back here in the nonlinear animation and let's call that not zero zero and let's do this for all the animations so uh, let's disable this so it's not moving go back to the double sheet and maybe with wind with five knots of wind we have a situation like this I insert a location keyframe as we, this will be knots 05 and the same shift D to the end here and uh, like we have done before some movement maybe a little bit of movement since there is more wind
Okay, we call that a go. So push down. And to the nonlinear animation, let's call this knots knots zero five. And let's create another animation for the win ten. And so on. And I'm satisfied with this, and I'm gonna push down also the knots 15. So now we have oh, this was knots 20, and this is 15. Yeah, we don't need this anymore, so we can delete this thing. Delete okay. So now, very important, we need to define the uh, rest pose of our uh, armature. And to define that, I'm going to the frame zero. Let's go back to the sheet. And I'm going to frame zero, and I'm gonna uh, delete all transformation we have done. So Alt R to remove all the rotation, Alt G and Alt S to remove scale and movement. Now I'm gonna create a new action here. Alt R, R G, Alt S, and the new action is gonna be default state. This name default state. I'm gonna insert a keyframe here in the default state, location and location in frame one. Also, I was in frame zero, in frame one, I location and rotation, and in frame two, I location and rotation. And I'm gonna push down the default state in the non linear animation. I'm gonna be sure to call this default state, and I wanna be sure that the default state is on the top of the uh, non linear animation step. To make it on the top, if it is uh, not on the top, I'm gonna put track ordering to the top. I want this on the top and I want all animation selected. Now the animation for the wind is done, uh, for the wind strength is done. Now we do the animation for the wind uh, um, orientation and this is very easy. My goodness, I have to parent also the armatures of the orientation. So control P, parent to object and keep transformations. Yes. Okay, so going into the animation tab, I'm gonna press I to insert a location keyframe for our orientation empty frame zero. And the orientation is orientation, the name of the action is orientation. Okay. So I go to the frame, 360, 359, 359 here, and I'm gonna rotate this. I'm rotating it clockwise, and as you can see in the transform panel, there is a number here which indicates the degree that I'm rotating, and I wanted this to be minus 359 because I'm, I'm doing a 360 rotation and in this position 359 359 I'm gonna insert a rotation keyframe so now our socks is gonna rotate into the wind please make sure that you right click and set interpolation mode to linear now we have the orientation name of the action we push down this to the non-linear animation editor and now we can call this orientation, save, select all the actions, 
here. I'm gonna press save and now the model in Blender is done. It's ready and uh, we can export it and this will be a sim object. We should export it in a sim object folder. We have already done a sim object before so you know how they work. So the sim object test project is here. Go to the package sources, sim object landmarks, and I'm gonna create a new folder called windsock video tutorial. And inside this, you should have a full folder model and another folder called texture. And in the model folder, I'm gonna export my windsock video tutorial okay so reload the LODs generate the XML select our WinSock select the folder export this and now if we go to the exporter folder and the model folder we now have a GTLF a bin and a XML file so and the texture of course we have the texture so if we can we can copy the texture in the model folder now and by uh, Opening this with the internal visualizer of Windows, we can see the windsock that is, is playing now our default state animation that has not any animation. We can see now the windsock 0 animation, win 0. This is win 10, maybe. This is the win 20 or the 15. I don't know, I don't remember. And this is the orientation animation. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. And uh, now let's take a little bit of a rest because now we have to um, edit the XML file. So for those who haven't already followed the other CMOJET tutorial, I quickly go to the setup of the CMOJET folder. So let's uh, go to the MFS SDK uh, samples folder. Go to the Winsock sample, package sources, sim object landmarks, my company Winsocks, and now here we have a sim.cfg that we're gonna copy in uh, the sim object folder here in my project, sim object test, package sources, sim objects, landmarks, and Winsock video tutorial here. And inside this, I'm gonna call this. Uh, wind sock video tutorial and save and the rest should be okay so go back and inside the model we're gonna copy the model.cfg and the xml in our landmarks wind sock video tutorial model I'm gonna copy this here in the model.cfg. I'm gonna give this the name of my uh, XML that will be wind sock video tutorial tutorial.xml and I press save. And from the wind socks XML, I'm gonna copy all the animation stuff here right down to the model info and I'm gonna copy this in my XML right down to the model info I'm gonna press save I'm gonna delete the original XML that's not need that anymore and now let's do some uh, variation here so we have uh, uh, the description of our animation and my animation are called uh, like this not with the key uh, it's not capital key I have the 0, 005 the 10 does uh, up to the 20 I don't have the 25 so let's delete the 25 1 2 3 4 5 animation so I don't need this And the default state of our animation is called armature. 
and the breast state is the same arm. The first part is describing the animation, is activating our animation and is giving uh, to all of them a GUID. So we need to generate new GUIDs for all this animation. And so go to the GUID generator and generate five GUIDs and copy them. Okay, so each animation has its own UID. And uh, then we have another section called the Anim Graph, where all our animation are uh, selected, are blended together uh, by looking at uh, this value here, that is the ambient um, velocity, the, the speed of the wind in knots and they are selected over this uh, threshold so when the wind uh, is uh, from uh, well is zero the first animation is played and uh, the second animation will be played from uh, when the wind is zero to four point nine and uh, the third animation will be played when the wind is from 5.1 to 9.9 .9 and so on. And the last animation will be played when the wind is over 20. Okay. And um, the second part here is the orientation part. So this is using the, the default Azobo template and the default, the default Azobo template is written in the, this uh, particular um, path and uh, we can open this so if we go to the official folder uh, we type simobjects.xml and this this one we have the description of the Azobo wind direction template. This template is looking for an orientation object. This is the, the same name of our uh, object. This is funny. This is funny because the, the code of the orientation is looking for the ambient wind direction in degrees and uh, is adding 180 degrees to that. And uh, if you if you remember, the biggest problem <laughs> at the beginning of the simulator were the, the wind sock pointing in the wrong direction. And uh, to, to solve this, they didn't change the wind sock model, but they changed the code. <laughs> Uh, so this at uh, the 180 degrees to them, and so the, the, they the switch the the wind. Uh, so it's funny. It's funny the solution they have found. So to explain that now we are referring to this template, and uh, you can see the same thing written in another way uh, in uh, other tutorials or uh, in other uh, XML for orientation is like this. I have commented this part with this particular XML code, so is not um, executed. This is the legacy uh, way of uh, uh, animating parts in uh, FSX or P3D. And uh, this requires another uh, animation line to call the animation where we put the length of the animation, uh, the name of the animation, which is orientation, uh, the type of the animation is a sim type of uh, animation because it requires um, a parameter. Now we have the part info and also the type param2 referring always to the name of the animation and the part info section where we have the name of the object we that we are uh, orienting. So um, our animation is called orientation, but also the empty that uh, makes the animation is called orientation. And then now we have the, the length of the animation and the code that is uh, moving the animation that is the same that Azobu is using and is, in the, is the wind direction in degrees. So this thing here and this thing here do the same exact things. The XML is okay right now. We can save it. And please remember to add uh, to your package definition uh, the asset group of the, uh, the new creative sim object. So package definition. And copy over. So we suck is called uh, um, video tutorial. Yeah. 
Okay, great. Let's save the package definition. Let's compile the stuff so we can see without um, running the simulator if there are major errors in our code. Okay, now it's done, it's okay. And I can copy the finished package to the community around the simulator and see if everything works as expected. Okay, so now I am at an airport. I have loaded up my project with the sim object uh, uh, with sock with the with sock. And now I'm gonna add it. So in the scenery editor, go to sim object. I'm gonna press all. I'm gonna search it. It's called uh, wind sock wind sock video tutorial. That is this one. I'm gonna add it to the scene. And now our baby is there. Okay, so it's orientated 90 degrees, so 180, yeah, like this. Now it's playing uh, the with zero animation. If we change the speed, now it's playing a faster animation. So when the wind comes from the south, this will be oriented to the south. And <laughs> look at the baby. <laughs> so this thing is five meter tall, you remember. And this thing is two meter and a half length. But look how massive is the stock wind sock. It's, it's big, it's big. If you if you have a right ear, uh, congratulations. Because it is a long journey, uh, there are a lot of new concepts here, like armatures, uh, like all the the windsock movement, and uh, well, you are you're being good. And if I have been good, please uh, subscribe to the channel. And in, in this tutorial, I have uh, teach to you how to do uh, the animation manually because we have manually moved the bones. And maybe in an upcoming tutorial, we can see how to do that in the uh, <laughs> automatic way, which is ex part. Well, it, it is difficult. It's, uh, it's very strange to do, and uh, well, I don't know if I if I will make a tutorial about that. But it's uh, it's the one that is used uh, for uh, flags like like this that the knees uh, are a realistic movement into the wind that are extremely difficult to make uh, in the, the the manual wave uh, that uh, we have uh, done um, right now so i hope uh, you enjoy and uh, see you next time bye bye